Welcome to the Digital Empires podcast. I'm Shruti Pankthi, a digital product entrepreneur and content creator. I went from being a hobby blogger to building a seven-figure business in just four years using the power of digital products and content marketing. And I'm here to help you do the same. So let's get started. Welcome. In today's episode, I want to share with you something that I like to call as reverse engineering best sellers. Now, this is a strategy that has made me literally almost $2 million just in the last two years. And this is something that I really wanted to break down for you in a very easy to understand format. But before I dive into explaining to you how I reverse engineer bestsellers, first, I wanted to share with you why I like to do that. The number one reason why I like to do this is because I like to tap into what I call existing demand. Now, I didn't study economics for so many years for no reason. If you have studied economics, you know that there is such a thing called as demand and supply, right? So whenever we have a demand for a product, that means that there are active, hungry buyers in a market that are looking for something, right? It could be something as simple as toothpaste. It could be something as simple as a curtain. It could be any product, digital or physical or otherwise. When there is demand in a certain market, that means that there is money flowing into that market because people are hungry for solutions. They're actively looking for answers. They actively want to spend their money to get those solutions and to get those answers. This is why for me, whenever I think of creating a new digital product, the number one question I ask myself is, is there existing demand for this product? The reason why I like to make sure that the products that I'm going to be creating have demand is because quite honestly, if I'm going to sit and create a product, I need to be sure that this product is something that is going to do well. And the best way to make sure that this product is going to do well is to actually find data that corroborates this request. Now, how I would do this for digital products in particular is that I would go to a couple of different platforms and look at what is selling over there. What do the stats look like? What are the comments that people are asking? What are the questions that are coming up around these topics, right? So for example, let's say that I want to sell PLR products, which is how I started Digital PLR Hub, which is on track to make multiple six figures this year. I would first of all go to trends.google.com, which is where you can see trends of pretty much every country in the world. And I would type in keywords related to whatever my niche or my audience is in. So let's say I want to look for PLR digital products and I will put in the country as United States. I can put in the timeline as let's say 30, 60 or 90 days. You can go back further, but generally speaking, you want to have fresh data. So I would not go back further than 90 days when doing this research, right? And I'm going to look at all the related topics, all the related queries that come up. And you can see that there are certain topics which have an increase in the search results. So for example, when I Google digital products, I see that there is influencer marketing, which has, you know, an increase in the searches in US. And then there is something known as service. Then there's also PLR digital product as a topic, which has a breakout sign. Now, a breakout sign really just means that it's, you know, having higher searches than usual and it's kind of like going viral, right? So that's a great indicator for me to continue to actually create PLR digital products, right? And when I look at related queries, I can also understand a lot of the questions that people are asking in relation to digital products. So one of the things that I see is beacons, which I know is a link in bio tool. That is a related query that is popping up as well. There's ChatGPT, there's E-Rank, Send, all sorts of different tools, which will allow me to understand where the mindset of this person is who is actually looking to create a digital product. Once I have done a little bit of trend research to understand what are people actively searching for, what are the things that they're looking for in terms of tools, templates, and resources, I then head to Etsy because I believe that is the biggest pool of data that you have access to. That is where thousands of people are selling so many products. So if there is any product that you want to create, I bet that there is some sort of analysis that you can do on Etsy to understand whether or not this product will sell well. So what I will generally do is that I will type in the topic of the niche that I'm looking for. So let's say that I'm looking for fitness as a niche and I wanted to create a fitness ebook, right? So I'm going to type in fitness ebook into my Etsy search bar and I'm going to have a look at everything that pops up. And here is where I want you to pay attention. I want you to be looking at signals that a product is doing better than others, right? So one of the signals that we can look at is if a product is a bestseller or not. Generally, Etsy tends to tag a bestseller batch to products that are selling consistently. That may not be daily sales, but for sure, it's weekly sales at the very least. 
which means that this is a signal that this product has a high demand. And when we know that there's a high demand, that means that there are other buyers out there whose demand is probably not being met and that we could meet as a potential supplier of that product. So when I scroll down into this fitness ebook search, I see lots of things popping up. I see obviously ads, which Etsy allows you to run. So we are going to skip that because that doesn't give us a great picture of what's doing well. Then I scroll down and I see that there is a Canva 12-week booty workout plan, which is priced at 25 euros and is a bestseller. Now again, great price point. And also what I love about this is that it's actually a template with exercise video animations. Like how cool is that? It's not just giving you an ebook and saying, hey, go and copy this and do this 12-week booty workout. It's actually giving you videos which are embedded inside the Canva ebook. And I can see why that is going to be a bestseller. Another thing that I see is an eight-week program for women, you know, included with their weight and all the things that they can self-assess inside of the workbook as well with done-for-you content. This is priced at 35 euros and is also a bestseller. Another tag you can look at is going to be a popular now tag, which essentially means that this is a trending product right now, but not necessarily something that would do well forever, right? Because A bestseller has had time, it has had data, and it has had weeks of data to understand that it's something that's doing well, whereas a popular now product is something that's having a temporary spike, but it may or may not be something that, you know, would be an evergreen great product to create and sell. Nevertheless, it is great for you to tap into existing demand. And if you already are, let's say, a fitness creator, this would be your sign to actually create a product around it, right? Now, when you go to the next level of scroll, which is when you actually click through to the products, you're going to also be able to see how many baskets those products are in. Now, this will not show up for every single product because obviously it's going to only show up for products that are in active demand, right? But that's also a great way for you to understand, hey, this product is doing well. So when I see that a product is in more than 10 baskets, I automatically assume that it's doing well, right? Now, We are all known to throw stuff around in our add to cart basket, but never really buy them. But think about it this way. You're only going to add products to your basket that you're contemplating seriously to buy, right? This is buyer behavior at its finest. So when I see products which are having, you know, multiple baskets which are active, so in there in 12 baskets, 20 baskets, 30 baskets, anything more than 10 is a great indicator that this product is going to do well, specifically if you have a niche audience. So for example, we're looking at fitness right now. And when I go in and tap into one of those products, which is again, a fitness ebook template with a 40 page program, I see that it's in 12 baskets. Now, again, this is just the data side of, you know, analyzing what products are doing well. But what does this tell us? What are the trends that we're observing when we are doing this research, right? I want you to really have a think about that. So the number one thing that's popping into my head is that people want step-by-step weekly programs. Some of the major bestsellers here that I see on this page are step-by-step programs, whether it is 30 day, four week, six week, 12 week, it doesn't matter. People want a step-by-step action plan. And that is something that really pops out to me, right? So as a digital product creator, I want you to actually not just do your research on a surface level, but really think deep down, what is it about the product that is attractive to my prospect or my audience? What is it that's actually exciting for them? So when I think about it, having a step-by-step program is actually great because you don't need to watch a YouTube channel to actually go and do that. You can simply print out this plan and pick whichever day or week you want to work on and just do that plan and you'll still be meeting your fitness goals, right? So that's a great product that not only saves people time on watching unnecessary videos, but it's actually giving you a step-by-step formula or a roadmap. Because let's be honest, digital products are supposed to help you save time or they're supposed to help you reach a conclusion or an outcome quicker, right? So this means that when someone is buying an ebook from you, they also want to be able to make sure that you are giving it to them in the most digestible, easy to follow format, right? When I scroll further down into this niche, I see that there is a huge demand for weight loss and fitness trackers as well. And at a second level, you can also analyze the prices of these products. Now, If you want to compete in the low ticket category and you want to be in a hamster wheel of competition, then you should look at products which are under five euros because that is really, really going to be difficult for you to stand out because people can very easily copy these products and you're not really going to be able to stand out much. So if you are looking to potentially sell on Etsy or even sell on your own Shopify store or stand store, whatever, 
I really want you to think of adding value and how you're going to stand out on a crowded platform like Etsy. This is also why I highly recommend my students to actually create their own store because it is much easier to stand out when you're in a league of your own. You're not competing with thousands of other sellers. You have your own brand. You have your own expertise. You have your own customer list. You can market to them. You can sell them whenever you want. You're not relying on a platform that is going to maybe one day just shut your store for no reason whatsoever, right? So I generally use Etsy only for market research, not necessarily for launching products there because I know that the profit margin tends to be really, really low and you need to have a very high volume, which means you need to be constantly churning out new products in order to actually make a decent amount there. And that's something that I just don't like doing. I would rather have three or four products that are consistently doing well for me on the evergreen side rather than being on this hamster wheel and producing new products every week. So I hope that this thought process was helpful for you. I would love to know more about future podcast ideas that you would like for me to cover. Make sure to send me a DM on at Shruti Pangde by tagging this podcast so that I know that you're coming in from the podcast. Make sure to follow this podcast already if you haven't done so, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to give us a follow. And if you would like to learn more about how I'm building a profitable digital product business, I have a 100% free training that you can get started with. It's just 25 minutes of the step-by-step roadmap of how I went from zero to over a million dollars with digital products. If you want to check that out, the link is going to be in the description box or in the show notes. Thank you so much once again, and I'll see you in the next one.